Today we're going to try something we've discussed about in the B460 Steel Legend from Ace Rock video. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to watch it right here. And this is the easy overclock mode, which should be just one click on the BIOS and the system should be overclocked. I've never tried to seriously overclock a CPU. My only experience was with my old A8 5600K from AMD, but I didn't give a f about that CPU because I just wanted it to die and it's still working actually, but, um, and I managed to gain like half a gigahertz of boost, both base and turbo, but that was pretty, complicated this time we're going to see if this if with this super easy tool we can manage to overclock it in five minutes and of course we're gonna check the actual gains let's get into it first of all of course we needed to set a baseline that's why i'm running blender benchmark right now and it's been running for, for like 15 minutes already and i'm waiting for these cores to arrive but you're probably watching them on screen right now next we're going to overclock it but first of all let's make a quick list of all the components which you should already know because if you don't know the components of my build you haven't seen my build video and you need to check it out if you swear that at the end of this video or you're going to check it out i can forgive you this time but turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any more video so right here we have an i3 10,100F RX 460 <laughs> from Gigabyte 4 gigs. Of course, we've got the B460 ASRock Steel Legend. We have 16 gigs of Viper Steel RGB memory at 3200 megahertz. As dissipation, we have the Antec Mercury 240, which is awesome. The the 502 flux from Antec also. As PSU goes, we have an HCG650 bronze full modular, two terabytes of storage, and that's basically it. So let's get started. We now have our baseline for the test, which is, as you're seeing right now, in Cinebench R33. A CPU multicore uh, points of 4941 points, which is better than a mobile i7 11th gen and a little worse than the i7 7700K. As the single core performances is slightly worse than a Ryzen Threadripper. Th thread th <laughs> Threadripper 2990WX and slightly better than an Intel Xeon W3265M with a ratio of 1075 points. This said, we are now ready to actually overclock it and uh, let's get into it. And there we go, we're now on the BIOS and all we need to do is first of all crank up the DPI's because this is just too damn slow. Uh, then we're going to need to go in the advanced mode OC tweaker and now we can set the base frequency boost which as you can read Install non-K series CPU to ASRock motherboard and enjoy the base frequency boost with the hidden power of processor immediately. Let's try to crank it to 75 watts, which is 10 watts more than the standard TDP, and let's see how it goes. Uh, 
as you can see at 75 watts it increased of almost 300 points in multi-core uh, task and in a single core task only about 16 points so this is great and free stuff and that's nice so the only thing left to do is crank it up and see how far we can go we're now at 85 watts and we're starting to get the first problem because as you can see from the single core performances we're a little bit lower than at 75 watts in fact we're at 1089 points and at 75 watts we were at 1099 but in multi-core performances we still gained around 100 points in fact we were at 5231 we're now at 5361 a reasonable solution right now would be to try the 80 watts but since this video is to show off the potential of this feature we're going actually to try and set it to 95 watts i'm pretty sure it's not gonna be beneficial for us in this case and i'm probably going to reset it to 85 or 80 watts and see the results but let's try it out and see how it goes and there we are at a hundred watts the results also for the multi multi-core performance it's worse than the five, uh, 85 watts and as you can see even in single core performances we dropped about 24 points in fact we passed from a thousand eighty nine to a thousand sixty five so let's set it to 85 watts as it was the last time and let's have some conclusions shall we and at the fifth try like the 100 watts wasn't really necessary so this is the fourth series one i found the best solution so far because i now have a single core performance of 1095 uh, points and a multi-core performance of 5520 points which by the way is as single performances is 300 points more which is really really interesting now let's also make a quick blender benchmark and see the results there so in the end it doesn't even matter oh, man. cringe uh, in the end our final results show us a pretty pretty interesting result in fact we've got up to 11 percent of increase in multi-core cinebench score which is really great considering that you will actually work for like five minutes ten minutes maybe because all the rest you need to do is just benchmark it you won't have any blue screen of deaths you won't have any crash because the settings are preset by the motherboard so nothing too crazy but still worth your try while on multi single core performances is slightly lower you're seeing the results here on screen and the results on blender are slightly worse because like there is only some seconds of gain 10 or 15 seconds for the time that this method requires i highly suggest this to everyone who is not really expert in professional overclocking because it's very easy and you gain a lot of performances while if you're a professional overclocker or if you have already overclocked some cpus you can just go with the standard settings and change the voltage the cpu multiplier the base frequency and so on 
you know better better than I do if you're a professional.